Well, 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 we're back. We're back on the Man United agenda. And what a game that was. Very exciting game, for sure. Um, obviously, we're going to go into detail about what happened, what went wrong, what went right. Um, and I'm joined by the master at knowing what went wrong. <laughs> it's bath time. Because before the show, I said, what a game, what a game. And you seemed disappointed. But you must agree it was exciting, eh? Oh, yeah, it, it, I mean, it was exciting. It was like, um, you know, the, the A-team is is exciting on one day. Like, when... No, well, no one gets shot in the A-team. Yeah, but like... You know, in the A team, you've got like a vi- like some villagers are under attack by a motorcycle gang or something, and the police <laughs> won't help. And then, like out of nowhere, like oh look, here comes Bruno Fernandez, and he's put a flamethrower on a ride on lawnmower and a score from fifty yards. Da, 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 da. <laughs> the Eric Ten Hag team. It's just yeah. like what it's not football. It's I don't know what that is, but it's it's just idiocy what I'm seeing on the screen. But I can't deny that there's there's an attraction to it. It it, it draws you in. I suspect that Klopp thinks that Manchester United players are a bad influence on his team <laughs> because they stop playing anything that looks like modern football. Well, so it's gonna be Hannibal Ten Hag. I love nice. it when the sand comes together. Let's Who's sending to Sevilla? Yeah. <laughs> We've dented their chances of uh, winning the title. That's a positive to come out of it, considering the week we've had. Obviously, two crazy games in a week, and to end the week like this, does it feel like a win to you? Absolutely not. Okay. Okay. Let's go for some comments. Uh, Lucky Singh is saying we have to stay calm. Defence. Uh, Nicholas, how are you doing? Said, uh, we just can't see out games, yeah. Twice in a week, uh, giving away penalties late on. Um, Matty Bassett, how you doing, Matthew? I don't wonder what your thoughts are on that. I want to say big up to and salute to Mr. B. What a wonderful watch along. Uh, full of emotion again. I don't know how you're going to survive or go to work tomorrow with a week you had <laughs> dealing with all that kind of uh, ups and downs. Uh, magic, magic there. Uh, big up everyone in the show and chat says Matthew Bassett. Nicholas saying here, somewhere in the multiverse, we won three in a row. <laughs> It could have been. It could have been. You know, you just never know. And we've ruined Liverpool's season. I'm happy for that. There you go. There you go. Matthew, you're on the same page as me. What a game, bath time. I mean, um, are, are we going to be joined by Dora today maybe as well? Is she on her way? Yeah, Dora. Dora's, Dora's driving very fast in the car to come and join us. She should be here in 10, 15 minutes. Wow. Exciting. Pure, pure excitement, bath time. 2-2. Two, two. As you can see, another late goal conceded, um, which, yeah, Nicholas was saying there. But there are sort of um, positives to talk about as well. We got double A, and he's mentioning two of them there, which we will go on to in a bit. But, wow, what what a result uh, and what a game for the neutral. Um, and clearly, as Matthew Bass is saying there, we've done some damage to Liverpool. So um, I'm, not, I'm from, not from Manchester, but I know up north they would be going buzzing about this because it means a lot being surrounded by Scousers and that kind of thing, to actually dent their title campaign and uh, stop them from getting 20 equal uh, with us uh, at the top. So that that's something we can look uh, positively on, don't you think, Bartho? <laughs> well, like, look, if, if we'd won, then sure, we've dented it. But I don't like how we've just become like what Liverpool were to us in the 90s. Like our season, like it's a good game because we've drawn two, two all at home, thrown away a lead, and stopped our rivals maybe winning a title. Um, I, I don't. It's not good enough, and it's got to change. What I saw on the pitch was sickening on um, one day in terms of the way things were set up. Casemiro, just what on earth is going on? Amrabat, I mean, I love that little pony, but what on earth is he doing on a football pitch? Wow, wow. I'd just say I'm surprised you said that about Casemiro. I thought he had a good game. Uh, obviously, by his standards, which have been low recently, I thought he had a good game. Uh, <laughs> he looked like he was in a Jackie Chan film at the end of it. Like... <laughs> well, one of the villains getting beaten up. <laughs> yeah. Do you not think that he should have been red carded for that? No, no, no. Look, look, this is what we were complaining about the other day when we were three two up against Chelsea. We want someone to sort of be a bit. Um, you know, rugged and bring someone down or take someone out. If he would was red carded, then fair play. People would have cheered him for it. Um, all right, let's start with the starting lineup. Not just talk about the performance, but with what we had available. I mean, the youngster came in with Maguire, and then it was like on the left back was Wambasaka. 
and the right that was Dallo. Do you think mm. that to do with Salah? Do you think we're trying because I, I know on corners we were focusing on a certain individual, the uh, Virgil van Dijk. But do you think we were concerned about Salah with his goal record against us? And put, that's why we put Wan Bissaka out there. He's supposed to be the best. I man. don't know. I know that. I, that, I know that. That like Gary Neville said that that was probably why. But I, I actually think myself, it's because Delo and Garnacho work well together, and. The low start, uh, Ganacho was at left wing, wasn't he? Like yeah. against Chelsea, and the low was at left back. And today, Ganacho was right wing, and the low was right back. Okay, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, of course, you're right, you're right there. Yeah, that's how they did do it. So maybe, yeah, maybe you're right about that. The combinations you got going, yeah. On. Obviously, Matt Tomney wasn't available, he's not even on the bench. I'm seeing here, so we've gone for Casimir and Mainu in midfield. Uh, the only other options from the bench who someone did come on was Mount and Ericsson. And um, Amrabat as well, your favourite Shetland pony. Mm. So starting lineup, do you think that that's fair? I mean, I'm, I haven't got any complaints about with Casemiro, Mainu, and Bruno in there. No. no, I mean the only real complaint I think you could make is probably about um, Anthony not starting um, because a lot of people think Anthony played very well okay. in his last game where he gave the penalty away. Um, I, I think that I think it's very difficult to drop Marcus Rashford against any top six club because. Yeah. It, you know, um, he does he, he does score a lot of goals. So I, I I think that's probably the team that I would have I would that I would have stuck out. Um I don't think that Ericsson can play the type of football that we're playing, so it'd be a bit pointless to have someone with that limited mobility in. Okay, fair enough. Just a couple of comments here before we move on. Uh, we deserve better saying we're just awful. We are sham. Is this what we've become? Sixth place scroungers seeking to dent other people's successes. Mm -hmm. And uh, DK Wilson all the way from half time. Home of the Fighting Eagles, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. <laughs> we, we have, we're going to run out of states and cities soon. Uh, DK <laughs> Wilson saying, check the video. We won 2 1. The game was stolen by VAR not intervening. I think talk about the penalty here because I, I, I saw it just for a glimpse. I don't think um, Wambasaka actually touched him. I don't know. Well, maybe I'm wrong, but uh, and this is separate from critiquing the team. So, yeah, I don't know. We, we, I haven't seen enough uh, about it. We deserve better. Saying uh, and Mount on for five minutes. Five minutes, really? Does he want more? Um, and Double A saying here we are not bad as our performance suggests. Just need to be coached a lot better, given the instructions a lot better as well. Mm. And um, big up to M and M. I'm gonna call you M and M. Um, cause I can't, I can't, sorry, I can't pronounce your name. Said we need competition for players like Rashford and Bruno. We need to have a lot more competition, and players need to earn a shift. Watching from South Africa, can I just say, um, I just come, I've my friends come back from South Africa, as you can see, and I've got um, a spear here. I've got a tall seven foot giraffe in my house, and I've got two lovely uh, South African bags and some uh, tops as well to wear. So you'll be seeing me in my garments very soon. South Africa, what a lovely country that is. And welcome, Eminem. How are you doing, bro? Um, it, it's never a penalty. The decision was soft and weak. Can we just, right, before we, because people talk about this. I thought, bath time, I'm saying this. Obviously, they went to VAR, but Wamsak shouldn't be diving in and that sort of stuff. Yeah. I agree with you there. But I don't think he touched a man. Any any thoughts on this? I, I am of look, I think that it's a stonewall penalty. When Basaka dives in, he makes contact. He doesn't make contact with the ball, he does make contact with the player. You're an absolute lunatic to do that in the box. Um, and got got punished for it. I, I mean, I understand that people are gonna like look at it in slow motion and we're gonna have physicists telling us about the force needed for a penalty, but I I don't think I've seen a clearer penalty. For um from a Man United player for a, for a while he he's, he slide tackles him in the box doesn't get the ball and cuts through the man it's a penalty he, he usually gets the ball though this is the thing with Wamasaka so you can't really take that out of his game but at that stage you'd think just stay on your feet bro that's all you need to do uh, DK Wilson saying uh, the fighting tigers I don't know what you said what did you call them Louisiana I might have called them the flying eagles or oh, something. Flying eagles, okay. <laughs> Uh, he said he posted a video here and is removed and removed from Trevor Paddock as well. Uh, probably a slow mo of what of the penalty decision, and it did not go to VAR. So maybe, um, well, it did. 
Oh, maybe. Okay, he's saying he didn't, but he's obviously he's all the way in Louisiana, so he might yeah. be a bad, bad stream or something. Um, it was definitely a penalty. Says Mister B, and Mister B watched live on the watch long. He did not make contact with the player. This is yeah, that's what I saw as well. Anyway, we're gonna move on to that because Rashford so obviously back in his mate over ha Hag the next. But sorry, I'm on Marina's run. Rashford is so obviously back in his, his mate. mate. This is Sancho. Okay, not even he said, Yeah, so he said he said that Rashford threw Ten Hag under the bus today. Um, he went off injured, and we it's, uh, we almost instantly scored after he went yeah. off injured. I personally think that that was a, that was a decent performance from Rashford on and off the ball. Um, I felt he worked just about hard enough, but our like the pressure that we apply as a forward line and as a midfield is embarrassing when you can when you look at Liverpool doing the same thing to us and you see how often Anana goes long or Delo goes long from a corner and Van Dijk just munches the boy Rasmus mm. like abs absolutely monstered him today and he then you got the most people there yeah he does but then you've got and Harry Maguire and Delo played like they were in the Avengers in the first half like I know Kwambala sort of came into the game but the first half was just Harry Maguire just running around heading everything and Delo somehow managing to get the better of 3v1s and things it was oh it was awful um, all the way from South Africa, Eminem is saying here, if PSG came in for Rashford, 100 million, would you take that offer? I would. I would. That's a lot of money. And um, Rashford's, yeah, it's been, as you know, you're a Man United fan. Um, I'm sure you, you would say the same thing. He's not been. Um, I'd take half of that, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, there you go. You've heard it first <laughs> here from the agenda. But yeah, uh, what do you think, Eminem? What would you do with 100 million? Um, would you take it or leave it? Um, so moving on, let's just let's get on with the game now because this is fantastic. This first half, what I mean to play Liverpool, you have to raise them standards and you have to be on it. I think we tried, but we just couldn't get amongst them. And we had a good first half, first 10 15 minutes. What? I thought we started oh, all right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The first, the first, like, look, like pretty much any game this season, we start the first 10 minutes out of the blocks high up the pitch. The other team don't look ready for us. We get a couple of half chances or lots of pressure on the ball. And you think, Jesus, we've we've been reborn. With Reza, you know, it's everything has clicked and stuff. And then teams just work their way into the game and they push us back. And then we rely on sort of counter-attacking instead of instead of trying to build up through the play. And I looked at like <clears throat> I looked at Mainu and Casemiro. In the first half. And you can't argue Casemiro's trophy cabinet, his experience, his record. He's played for top clubs. He's played for one of the highest pressure countries in the world. He's captain of it. Yeah. And you look at Mainu, and we know Mainu is talented beyond belief. Mm. And they couldn't get anywhere near the game. They weren't able to affect it. They were like, Mainu, I mean, I know you'll probably say Harry Maguire had a stormer today. And he yeah. did play quite well. But that moment where Mainu went to ask Maguire who he should be picking him picking him up, I'm very disappointed with Harry there. Like that's a young player that needed some guidance. But um, but hold on a minute, hold on a minute. You you jumped the gun here, bath time. So you're saying obviously by this this is the second time they had a corner. They've already yeah. scored from a corner. Yeah. Are you suggesting that they didn't spend the week going through drills, set pieces, and this is he was instructed to do a job? And then he's no, no, I'm not. I'm not suggesting that at all. Uh, what I'm suggesting is, is that um, as the leader of a defence, which Maguire is, like, and you know, he's an ex club captain, someone you look to for guidance. Kobe Minu was unsure of the space or the man um, that he was meant to be marking or blocking, and he asked Maguire for guidance. And from what I saw, Maguire just said, "Yeah." Or something like that, and I felt that I felt that players like Mainu and Casemiro, we know that Casemiro has quality. We it's abundantly clear that Kobe Mainu has quality, but the setup of the team means that they can't show it. Like we're so disorganized in the first half. After the first fifteen minutes, was I, I mean I I don't I just keep thinking can United look worse. 
And yet we do. Every time, the gaps, the holes, the amount of distance they have to cover. And I mean... I mean, right, like, let's talk about let's talk about the first goal because yeah, you're right. the defensive expert. What's right. going on? So it's obviously a set piece, and obviously, we had a good start. I thought we had a good start, but let me just say this: I admire Liverpool. The, the sharpness, the speed that they attack, their movement, their, their, the teamwork. Mm. It's brilliant. It's on a different level. And as you said in the previous game, um, <laughs> drug thing working or something like that. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it's amazing to see the speed and ferocity and the the, the talent that they have. You know, for yeah. playing football. So anyway, they've got a corner. The corner comes over and they, they, we set it up because we knew Van Dijk is a danger. So Van Dijk's sitting at the edge of the box. Everyone's picking up. And I think Kobe, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know what you guys think of the comments or yourself, Bath Time. But I think Kobe, his job was to block the incoming uh, defender, which is Van Dijk. And he had a guy, um, Diaz, on his back who sort of pushed away from him to peel off to the back's post, kind of anticipating something. So... It didn't work out for him, and I don't think it's his fault necessarily. But obviously, what happened is the balls come over. It's Nunes, who's another big strapping guy, he's a striker. He's mm-hmm. flicking the ball to the back post, and Diaz has just finished his dinner. So I'm not blaming Kobe, but there's a bit of disorganization there because Liverpool, you know, are a threat at set pieces, and we didn't pick it up properly. We didn't win the first header for one. We're too focused mm-hmm. on their main man, which is Van Dyke, and yeah, you need to be, sometimes you need to be a bit proactive, and as you said, the second time around, be a bit more proactive, say, right, this happened first time around, scrap what we've worked on in training, just pick up this guy from now on, or whatever. That should be an instruction quite clear. Um, but yeah, your thoughts on the first goal? Do you, do you want to pick anyone out for an error? Guys in the comments, what do you think? Yeah, wan like like, um, he, he gets beaten for first contact. Right. right. So, yeah. Okay. So, like, that's, you know, that's not the, you know, that's going to happen from time to time. But that is an error because Wambazaka hasn't won the ball in his zone. And then Casemiro appeared to fall over during it. um, And Kobe ran to, like, almost try and make first contact himself. Um, I'm I'm not a huge expert on corners because I'm not I just you know I take them I'm not really in there yeah. for stuff like that but it looked it looked to me that like um we just like Mainu vacated his his space is right. what it looked like to me and may I don't know what our systems like maybe Delo could have stepped up but I, I also felt that the goalkeeper could have done a hell of a lot better on that With the, the first goal yeah yeah I felt he could have done yeah. a lot better. And a lot of my sort of questions were answered about Anana today when, for some bizarre reason, I saw him applying Vaseline to his gloves. Yeah, do you see that? Yeah, funny that. What was that about? Um, <laughs> it, it, I think it's to do with fisting. <laughs> um, you know, they sometimes they fist the ball uh, like that goalkeepers. Now, I think it's to do with stick. Um, this Vaseline will stick, it give you more sort of grip, I imagine. Yeah, but it's a lubricant, so that's the opposite, isn't it? Like, think about the, the texture of Vaseline and on, on that glove. I think it's going to stick. So, you go and claim a ball, I think it's yeah. going to stick to that. I, I, that's my theory, anyway. I was really surprised by that. It was Never weird, wasn't it? Football. You? No, like, I remember, I mean, like, I've seen all sorts. Like, I used to copy Patrick Vieira and like just pour a load of Vicks over myself <laughs> when I was younger. And I, I, I've still got those. Do you remember Robbie Fowler used to wear them like nose? Nose jack. Yeah, I, I still have them. But I've never seen someone <laughs> goalkeeper put Vaseline on their clubs. I tell like, you something. When, but when you were young, and when we, I was playing for was youngster, deep heat for me was Vaseline. I'd put yeah. Vaseline on my legs just to put a layer of um, thickness, you know, to protect me from the cold. But never seen that. I don't know if you guys in the comments have ever seen anything like that before. But who, um, um, uh, who was it that did Ali with something on the gloves? That was Sonny Liston in night 64. Sonny Liston, yes. Yeah. He, M- maybe he, that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> put chilli powder, Vaseline yeah. on, <laughs> and like, get a bit of Darwin Nunez's eye. Oh, God. <laughs> Quick comments. Um, Eminem is saying here, Casemiro's legs are gone. We need to catch in on him as well. So he wants to sell Rashford for 100 million <laughs> and he wants to sell Casemiro as well. You you're, uh, should be in finance or the treasure for the club. Um, you'll make us a lot of money. Uh, UK Strange is saying here, Kobe Maynard, the youngest player to ever score against Liverpool in Premier League history for um, is that for Man United or in total in, for anybody? Uh, Klopp flopped against us in his last season. Thumbs up from UK Strange. Mm. Big up to Emma. 
Isn't it Joe Hart who also does this? I don't know. I've never seen it. But maybe you're right. You ever seen Joe Hart do the Vaseline? Nah, I've never seen the keeper do it. Um, cashing on Casemiro, maybe send him to the knackers yard and get him some glue to gel his team into a unit, possibly. Nice. Better. <laughs> all right, so we we're 1-0 down, and then I think they took over in bath time. They were just all over us. We were a bit of a shambles. We couldn't really match them. But I think that's just the standard that we have to deal with. Look at the league table. Those three teams are elite from anyone else, including ourselves. Yeah, but, you, I mean, you say, like... You give me reasons why we're a shambles, but we're a shambles because we're not set up correctly on a football pitch. Like, elaborate, please, because uh, yeah, for people, elaborate what you mean by that. Why, why were we getting overrun so much? And you could look at the shots and all that kind of thing. Why are we getting so overrun? Why are we a shambles? Wow, 28 shots. Wow. Um, why we're we getting overrun? Well, it's like we've talked about on the eye test about spacing a lot about the distance yeah. be between the lines. Um, and we've talked a lot about um, how you have, you can have several different pressing schemes, right? You could, you could, uh, but the majority of them are zonal pressing schemes, or at least the ones that I've played in. Like you stop playing in man marking pressing schemes. I would suspect at about five or six years old, right? Because that's what you play in the playground, isn't it? Where everyone's just running around and, um, and United, United, like, so they play a man marking press scheme. And all that means is, is that McAllister drops, if McAllister drops in between the centre backs, like when, when they're picking the ball up, Kobe mm -hmm. Minor has to go and follow him. And then Casemiro's by himself, right. and someone might step into that space and force Rashford inside. And then, but someone can. It's a trap. It's yeah. a trap. It's, 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 it's like. I genuinely would love 10 minutes with Ten Hag for him to explain what he's doing because I've, I've played a lot of football and I've played a lot of different systems and I've always worked really hard on understanding the systems that I've played in. And I, I don't understand why this man marking thing is, is what, why he's doing it. And the, the other thing I suppose, right, is that there are some teams like... Um, one of the most important games in European football, I always think, is when um, Inter played Barcelona um, yeah. with Jose. Yeah. Like, a right. volcano went off or something, and they had to take the bus there. And Jose afterwards like, said that he didn't want his team to have the ball, right? Because he felt that they were more dangerous without the ball than with the ball. Yeah. Right. When you're pressing, the whole point of pressing is it's intent to win the ball back. But the United's pressing scheme makes us too vulnerable, and it and it just opens huge gaps everywhere. And I don't understand. Like we're going to talk about, we'll do this on the eye test tomorrow yeah. night. Just quickly, why why are we on that? So all right, so McAllister drops off into the back three. Cove yeah. is expected to go with him because we're yeah. supposed to be man marking. Isn't that the cue for the defensive line to squeeze up, compress the space so Kobe doesn't get exposed or picked out and there's there's less space to um, for them to exploit? Yeah, but if you're right, yeah, fair, that, that would be a normal comment and a fair comment. But the thing is, is if both your pivots in Casemiro and Mainu are doing this and they get dragged out of position, you're expecting, what are you expecting the back four to do? To step into the midfield? Vroom, vroom. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome. Late arrival. Um, but you're Sorry in for the house. Sorry for that, guys. I was in, a, in another city, 90 kilometers from here. I was speeding to come to this stream. So please forgive me. But yeah, continue. Sorry for barging in. <laughs> so Just, uh, we're discussing, um, if you look at the, the board, 28 mm -hmm. shots conceded. We were a bit overrun. Why? We're asking the question why. And uh, Bath Hamish is explaining that um, we sort of man marking and we get mugged off a bit because if uh, McAllister drops into the back three, someone's expected to go with him. That creates a lot of space and they play triangles around us and suddenly they've got to create a lot of space for us. So, sorry, Bath Time, just continue. because Yeah. Kind of... and, right. To, to wrap that bit up very quickly, if you think back to the Brentford game, um, we had. I can't remember. Was it Wizza? Someone like that they have up front? Yeah, Wizza right. and Tony. We go man to man. The pivots get pulled out of the middle of the pitch. And then one of the strikers drops off into that space. 
and they've got all the time in the world to turn and launch attacks. And like what Liverpool appeared to be doing, I counted three five on twos in that match where wow. we lost the ball or we get too high up the pitch. There's no one in the middle, and it's just Paul Willey, Delo, and Maguire defending five players. Like, and it is, um, it, it's I I think Kobe Minu is a good player, is a, is a good player, and he's going to be a great player. I think Casemiro was a great player, um, maybe not so anymore. But I know that those two will ne will never play in a system as disorganized as this, and I don't think you can put anyone. In that system, I don't think you put Jude Bellingham. I don't think you can put Prime Messi in that system, and it gets anywhere near the best out of out of anyone. It's nonsense what I saw in the first half, and then that continued into the second half. Dora, do you want to counter that, or do you want to agree with um, our man? Bob? Uh, I absolutely agree. I think uh, we have the same issue that we had uh, throughout the whole season. Right, we commit too many players uh, to that man-to-man. -man press or whatever it is uh, and then we are having holes in that midfield or behind the CDM uh, for example today uh, Maino and Casemiro uh, were too high in my opinion we, I mean I will say it like even though we considered two goals I think Kambala and Maguire had a hell of a game they had a hell of a game uh, because they really uh, you could see you could, you could see that they gave it all today and it didn't help that our midfielders were you know, kind of in a no man's land uh, when they were racing. Uh, I have a lot of, you know, mixed feelings about this game. To be, I'm gutted that we, you know, mm -hmm. once again, it was an unforced error from Van Bissaka. Uh, I, to be quite honest with you, I, I know you probably guys discussed it, uh, that penalty, but to me, it seemed very, very soft. It, it looked like ah. a dive at first. It looked like a dive at first, and then in the end, Elliot kind of put the, put his leg uh, between Van Bissaka's legs, and he fell down. And it, it, it's just, I don't know. It's, people are going to say, oh, unlucky. I just say, I mean... Van Bissaka should have done better there. Uh, he should have. He should. He would. He should have just stepped in front of Elliot and it's stopped. Just rank idiocy. What he did. He, yes, and just stop constantly trying to tackle everyone. Just stay on your feet. This is my problem with Van Bissaka. Like I don't doubt he probably he has that the talent. Blah blah. blah but he he's always relying on those you know tackles like Casemiro. Casemiro is doing that because he is too slow. <laughs> He's too rusty. He's too yeah. slow. He cannot follow the, the opposing players. But uh, yeah, I, I agree with what Bad Time said. Like, I'm I'm not trying to you know agree with everything that <laughs> you know Bad Time said. I, I, I know I, I love there's discussions only one truth. about it. There's, there's only one truth, Dora. And if that's the truth, then yeah. You're, you're yeah, I mean, we there was a hole. There was a hole, and they scored. Uh, they they almost scored. Uh, they could have scored a lot more. But Nunez, Diaz, mm. uh, and our defenders who blocked a lot today. Uh, I think those those two Liverpool players they missed bare chances. They missed bare chances. Luis Diaz could have scored could have scored two more. Nunez had some. He he, he obviously has some problems with his decision making. If he was a a, a bit a, a bit smarter player uh, with a higher football in IQ, he would be an a, an absolutely amazing player. But he missed bare chances today, and I'm glad that we got one point. I'm glad that we stopped a, a bit a Liverpool a bit. To, uh, you know, on the road on, on that twentieth uh, uh, title, I'm glad that we stopped that. But uh, yeah, a lot of mixed feelings today. Can I just ask Dora? Have you ever lived, been to London? This no. is about there. Yeah, she said. Great yeah. <laughs> chances today. Have you just come back uh, from London? Yeah. Uh, have you watched yes. Top Boy? Have you watched Top Boy? Is that what it is? What? Top boy, is it top? No, boy? I don't know. Yeah, no, 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 okay. no. But you know what? I, I, I hang out with you guys a lot, and other, you know, English. Uh, uh, we don't. I don't say bear. I, I promise. Mr. B boy. does. Oh, does he? Okay. Well, there yeah, you go. he has influence on me. He influenced me. Mr. B influenced me. <laughs> That's what the B stands for. I'm from. I'm from. Yeah, I'm from South London. All of a sudden. Yeah. All right, a couple of um, comments here before we move on. Uh, Interplay a masterclass. Against Barcelona in 2010. Uh, and just remind me, because I, I didn't know this quote, but Bart, you said to play without they planned not to touch the ball. Is that, yeah. is that what you said? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
the plan was was that like he felt that they were more likely to concede goals if they had the ball. Wow. So they they did it. They didn't want the ball. And the point is is that pressing the idea the intention is to win the ball. Yeah. Right. And then and then obviously to try and score from it. But um, Jose's teams they just didn't want the ball and they waited to spring. I mean. Essentially, that Inter team was a really high class version of Brentford. Right. With some talented players, for sure. Um, Absolutely. The problem is, we don't have enough intelligent players to play like the Inter the team. Um, there you go. And welcome, Dora. That's from Montreal MEFC. Um, I need to see the replay of the penalty again. Regardless, though, I hate defenders throwing themselves to the ground. You've got to cut uh, your own odds for the success. I might have to mute myself because someone's coming home and the dogs are about to go off. <laughs> Oh right, okay. I'll um, uh, I'll take over. Lucky Singh, always up to date, is telling us that Forest are two 0 up. Is that against Spurs? Oh, God, I, I really, the... yeah, I really Probably. feel we're thrown away. Um, Champions League this year. Yeah. Um, Liverpool's best attacker is Jota. Really, apparently, he's um also like a a, a FIFA player. Jota, he's one of the best FIFA players in the world. Um, very annoying person. And then Andrew, I'm not reading that. Stonewall penalty. Yeah, I, I agree. And um, he's correcting Lucky Sping. It's it's 1-1 one, one, Spurs Forest. And I will uh, take Andrew's word over Lucky Sing, I'm afraid. Um, uh, right. So, Dora, um, oh, you're here, Amonde. You, you're just being quiet and letting the dogs chat. All right, if you don't mind, the dogs will be barking in the background. Yeah, that's fine. So, so, yeah, so as we're moving on. So, obviously, we've gone 1-0 down. Dora, just quickly, any, you want to point fingers about the first goal? Have you got a running um, screen there about the first goal? What's your, we discussed it already, but what's your thoughts on conceding from the corner there? What's going on? Another set-piece blunder for, from Manchester United. Uh, this time, I think it was Mainu. Uh, it was Kobe who left his player uh, Again, man to man defending. It's it's not, we're we're not doing it right. We are not doing it right. Uh, I mean, at the end you could see that Kobe was you know uh, guarding Casemiro. <laughs> he was he was you know around. He was next to Casemiro and Diaz is his player and he was there like I I I don't know. Again, Diaz was all alone. The easiest goal in his life probably. Okay, we're going to move on. Uh, so we're one nil down. I thought with all the play that Liverpool had in the first half, we were fortunate to go in one nil. That, <laughs> that, that kind of kept us in the game, gave us some momentum. I imagine the, the manager would have even said, "Look, we're only one nil down. We can get back in this." How many of you really thought that we could have got back in the game based on the domination they had in the first half? Be honest. I I did, just on the basis of how stupid, like the fixture is and the team is. Yeah. Like um, I, I mean, like against uh, against them in the cup, like we should have been out of it and things. And one thing that was encouraging me was I, I listened to Sky. Well, I watched on Sky, and you could tell from the reactions of Carragher and Klopp that that team is nervous. Like they're in a t they're in a they're in a title race, and they've never won a title race. Liverpool, the, when mm. they won the the Premier League, they did it at an absolute canter. And they'd won it by they won it in April almost before COVID started. But every other time they've been in a title race, they've lost by a point or whatever to um, to City. So I, I felt that there was a bit of fear within them, and I think that even though Van Dijk, and I'm not trying to wind anyone up, where well, I think he's by far the best defender like in world football, um, he has he looked to me worried and nervous throughout the game shouting at other players like i think he i think he understands his rickets in that team with Kwanzaa and things and then that's that basically turned out to be true because i mean just imagine imagine being liverpool dominated that game someone hits a poor square pass like on the edge of the center circle and bruno fernandez hits it with the outside of his foot from 50 yards into the into the corner of the net i mean, I mean it's just outrageous. You can't genuinely, you can't coach against that that kind of intervention. It's like you know, it's like um, I don't know the Noah and the flood. There's no way you can prepare for that kind of divine intervention that Bruno brought down on them. But um, Dora, what what did, what were you thinking at halftime? 
I felt we were underwhelming in my like I excel <laughs> after that Chelsea game. You know, we are all you know very disappointed. Uh, we I, honestly, I don't have that much faith uh, in Manchester United, but it's obviously even though Ten Hag is playing suicidal football and his style doesn't work at all with this squad of players and this league, it, it kind of doesn't suit Liverpool and doesn't suit Klopp and our players just turn it up against Liverpool for some reason. They feel like, okay, they are playing with, you know, they're very open, uh, you know, uh, at the back. You know what? Maybe maybe we can do something about it. I don't know. We, we Like, there is, I mean, we beat them in the cup. This is a draw. Uh, I think it was a draw at Einfeld as well. I mean, that's what four dropped points yeah. in the title race for, uh, uh, against Manchester United. Probably the first Manchester United in the last thirty since the eighties, I would say. Only Ralph Ragnick is probably or David Moyes or yeah. I mean, it's it's there, right? Yeah. So it it I don't know. It we, we don't sue them at all. Uh, I mean, it's like I Ollie felt that. Pep, isn't it? Yes. Like... Yeah. Yeah, absolutely agree. Ole and Pep as well. Uh, it's it feels like, but it, again, I felt that in the end they, I I don't, I don't like saying that you know, especially against Liverpool, but they deservedly so. They were one nil up and we were poor. I think the only good, uh, you know, uh, only good players were the defenders. Okay, we'll come they, on to that for sure. Yeah, that yeah. Lot, but, but in the first half, yeah, I, I, I thought that midfield was horrendous. The attack didn't work at all. And then Bruno Fernandes comes up later and scores a banger. Okay, and I'm so like, Andrew Williams saying here, Liverpool were anxious. I agree, as Bath Time is saying. He's also saying, I called it, I said to Mr. B, goals change games. If we mm -hmm. flew one, we'd, we'd do so. Uh, Diaz's uh, goal <laughs> was a bit poor, was on a bit of poor zonal marking, which should be criminal hot corners that's from montreal mefc and about the points dropped this week since brentford seven points dropped in a one week yeah. and when spurs and villa lose we failed to grab extra points to go above them or even get closer big g saying here can i just skate kobe's been out of position is actually down to bruno not playing the role of number 10 the tactics by eric ten hag are completely stupid and, can i um, can i come on to that actually yeah, sure, go ahead. like um i've been thinking recently Right, about Kobe's position. Because Mr. B is always asking me where I think that Kobe should play. Yeah. And um, what the conclusion that I've come to is that we need to find out if Kobe Mainu is a reliable goal scorer. Um, because goals goals win matches. You know, it's like it's like McTominay. I think McTominay's a very good central midfielder, like defensive central midfielder. But because he can score goals, you've got to get him further up the pitch. Like it not too dissimilar to Gareth Bale. Gareth Bale was perfectly good as a left winger, but because he could score goals, you had to get him up the field. Yes. In two games, we've seen Mainu in basically that left-hand side half space against Wolves as well and against Liverpool score perfectly executed curlers. Like real, like a real killer's instinct with the touch he took today to curl it in. Like he took it so quickly that the goalkeeper was two steps from where he should have been. I, I really think that we've got to see if Kobe Mainu is a reliable goal scorer in that position. And then if he is, he's got we've got to get him we've got to get him there. Can we hold that thought? Because we're going to come on to Kobe, talk about okay. Kobe when we discuss his goal. Uh, but first of all, after 50 minutes, this is five minutes after the rousing team talk from our manager, who by the way, uh has got a better win record at home than Alex Ferguson. Um, I just want to wind uh, bar time up with that, but um, yeah, after five minutes, <laughs> after <the> break, <laughs> five minutes after the break, uh, Dora, it happened, it happened. The fluke, as um, Andrew Williams saying, what's your thoughts about this goal? I mean, Bruno, fantastic, almost from the halfway line. Talk to me. I don't know what happened, I think you know. Mr. Q, I will I will call that uh, player Mr. Q because I don't want to butcher his name. Uh, he was too comfortable there. He was too comfortable passing it to Van Dyke and Bruno smelled oh. smelled smelled it and you know what he shot it and a great it was a great goal. It was really a great goal and I was happy for Bruno because I felt that you know <laughs> he didn't have a good, very good game in all honesty uh, uh, until that point. But yeah, uh, I think it. How do you say it? It put us above the water. We weren't drowning anymore. 
I think it swerved the momentum and I think we started playing better or with more intensity because I felt that the players were dead on their feet at 75th minute. They were dead, but they tried after that goal, especially. So yeah, absolutely amazing goal. And I don't know, maybe Callahan and the you know Klopp is or maybe Klopp is going to say to his goalkeepers, you know what, chill. Yeah, you know, you yeah. don't have to go that far out. And you know what? Uh, it reminded me actually. It, it it wasn't the same. It wasn't necessarily the same circumstance. But you know, Dan Stankovic goal uh, with Inter uh, against Schalke oh, in two thousand ten yeah. uh, <laughs> against no Young Neuer or even better, which or Cavani against Fulham last season or two seasons ago. Or McTominay, uh, Manchester City. Or McTominay, Manchester yeah. City in two thousand nine. Seen, or it was this it was the last game before covid yeah. uh, break i think so yeah abs- i mean great goal, great piece of play by bruno most certainly i think um because from the television screens i think why is he shooting from there and it's only after i realized the keeper was well off his goal line wasn't he is that an issue with like modern keepers days it's always going to be because andrew williams is saying here he saw the picture before it came to him but as we know i mean in modern football this this is what you're likely to see. Uh, what well, Onana got lobbed in pre-season, similar. Yeah. yeah. Well, I've, I, among Dev said on this channel for years that I think that this is something that more players should do. Like I learned off a guy called David Villa, um, of the Edo legend, and in the first ten minutes of any game, David Villa would take a shot from miles out to try and force the keeper back. And I've been doing it. I've been doing it in every game basically since then. And I think that I. Like there was one moment in the match, right, where I nearly had a heart attack. Where the low was on the ball, and he looked, he looked to his right, and he passed it to his right. And I thought, the low's the right back. Who's he passing it to? And then Anana just appears. Yeah, yeah, right yeah, back. yeah, that's right. And I was like, what? But that, but Anana was basically playing as a number six for Inter <laughs> against City. Like he was so high up the pitch, yeah, and true. I often think that him getting lobbed in that preseason friendly against Leon or someone has really set us back because that I want Anana that far out of goal, allowing us to push further up the pitch. And I, 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 I don't know about the position of modern day goalkeepers, but you don't see that goal from Bruno that often, despite Dan James doing it like a couple of days ago. Um. So who but, knows? But, just talk about the quality, though, the quality of the the, the goal. Outrageous. You, you could play it anyway. You can go into row Z or something. It sort of he pinged it. It, it sort of it didn't go high, lobbed high. It sort of pinged but, at a sort of six, seven foot height level and sort of came down at the right pace. And I mean, perfect. Great, great it. technique. What you should be doing, in my opinion, is using the inside of your foot setting it out for it to come back in and putting height on it. That's what I would expect, like, a player to do. Bruno just smashed it with the outside of his foot. Uh, uh, incredible goal. Like, I, I ge- genuinely, the technique, the, the the ability to judge the distance, it's outrageous, that goal. Yeah. Yeah, carry on, guys. I'm just going to mute myself. Um. All right, well, I'm, going look at, I'm going to look at some comments while we're doing that. Um, right. I'm going to start off with Andrew saying, Kobe reminds me of Bellingham a lot, so him being number 10 is tempting. Not sure if he has the goals in him to do so. All right, well, I think Monday wants want to come back to that later. Gareth Bell started his career at left back. Exactly. But if you can score goals, put them further up the pitch. Yeah. Um, Lucky is going on about how he wants different players um, at the club. And right, Big G. Bruno was rubbish. I could have scored that. The goal should not <laughs> overshadow how rubbish he played. I think that Bruno was really bad in the first yeah. half for it, particularly with his pressing work. Um, I felt that compared to the Liverpool midfield and forward line, United looked amateurish in what they were doing. Having said that, I felt as the game went on, Bruno got stronger and stronger. And I thought he was fantastic in the last 20 minutes as a sort of central defender. Um, I, I mean, maybe Maguire up front, Bruno as a, as a five is the way to go. Isn't that concerning bad time for Bruno? Because, you know, I agree. I think he had a po- very poor uh, first half. Uh, 
I thought his passes were so bad. His last yeah. passes, he would always, you know, pass it to either Van Dyke or Mr. Q. <laughs> uh, you know, the, the, the liver. Kako? How? Kwanza. Did you just Kwanza. Kako? 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 How? 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 Yeah. <laughs> Kako? Molim? Yeah. Uh, Kwanza. Kwanza. Uh, I mean, on the on paper, right? Those passes look you know, really, really, you know, easy. And then he yeah. butchers them. And I'm like, why are you doing this? For example, remember that uh, in the first 10 minutes of the game when Garnacho scored that goal on the offs uh, from the, but it was an offside. Yeah, yeah. If he passed it earlier. Just oh, yeah. to a second earlier, because Van Dijk wasn't uh, near uh, Garnacho at that point. If he passed it one second earlier, that wasn't an offside, that was a goal. And to me, I feel like he had a bad game. Uh, and isn't it concerning that his best performances this season is from the centre back position? Do you know that he started as? Sorry, like, you, know, you know Bruno started as a centre half until he was. I like, mean, I mean, I don't need a you know a centre. I, I need a good number ten. I need that Bruno from two thousand eighteen. Should I contradict you know, that... myself? I'm going to contradict yeah. myself. Bruno yeah. can score goals, like evidently, mm -hmm. and he can make assists. But I'm beginning to wonder, having seen Bruno um, play at centre-back and also play deeper today, if maybe number six and the guy that fills in next to, uh, you, you know, like the La Salida Volpiano, a sort of Busquets role might actually suit Bruno because he's got the ability, he's got recovery pace, Bruno. He can get up and support attacks and he can, he, he obviously understands the spaces to defend. So I, I agree. I totally agree with you. I think he should be, we say for a long time he should play, be playing deep. And I think he can perform that well. When he comes deeper today, late in the game, he's getting the ball and he, he's press resistance because he's good on the ball. He knows how to turn away from trouble and pop it around and tick and he could I think he can dictate games from that position, you know. So yeah, I I'm, I'm with you on that one, Bartha. Well, because I, I know I am contradicting myself because I'm the goal scorers should be further up the pitch. But of course I am now of the opinion that this this midfield of Bruno at six, McTominay at ten, and Kobe Mainu at eight, or the other, or you know, Kobe at ten, McTominay at eight, or whatever. I think that that's got physicality, pace, and the ability to get backwards and forwards. And I wonder if that might be our best combination because we saw the best of Bruno playing deeper today. And we saw the best of Kobe Mainu playing further up the pitch. Yeah. And I wonder what I wonder when when I see it, I wonder if I've got it wrong because Ten Hag must see it. And you know, we've seen against Wolves, we've seen Kobe been much better further up the pitch. Yeah. Like, can we talk, can we talk Kobe? Because you just set me up there. Yeah. Um, so obviously 50 minutes we've gone one one all. And you're thinking, yeah, we're back. The crowd are up, as Dora was saying. It had a big impact, that goal. And it came from a kind of mistake, but fair play, the quality was good. 67 minutes gone by. Let's talk Mainu because we, we, we let's catch up from where we were before. It's Kobe Mainu in that left half space, here picking up the ball. You're right, bath time. You gave me a flashback out of the goals that he scored this season. Similar position. Mm. Talk to me about this young man because, boy, oh boy, that was something special. Um, I really like Kobe Mainu. Um, I have some concerns about his game. Most of them is about how young well, he is. Can we talk about the? Let's have some positives about the goal. Let me. Yeah, but I'm I'm giving you a balanced thing okay. a Monday. Like, but when you have a player that has the ability to manipulate the ball in in tight areas and can also score and is bloody eighteen and he's not doing this against like Newport or something. He's doing this against. Liverpool, um, you, you've got to think, like, how do we get the best out of him? And I'm not sure having him as a pivot is the right position for him. I remember him on there a couple of years ago. I said exactly the same thing about Bellingham, where I said that Declan Rice will always be a better central midfielder than, than Bellingham, and Bellingham has to be used further forward because he just he, he crosses his man, all these different things, these mistakes he does. And now I'm seeing the same thing from Kobe Miney, where I'm seeing an elite attack in talent that is able to drop into spaces, receive the ball. Go on, go on, Dora. 
No, I didn't want to, but I just want to say, so you're saying that next season, Kobe Manu is going to be our best scorer. Best scorer, goal scorer, because Bellingham is that for Real Madrid. He's their best scorer. So <laughs> I hope that that's the truth about uh, Manu as Maybe. well. I mean, like, yeah. Hoy Hoyler, Rasmus isn't really meant to be a goal scorer in the system that we're playing. Like, mm -hmm. you know, Firmino, when Liverpool won the league, didn't score a goal at Anfield. He got seven or something that yeah. year. Like, what, they're, they're, they're not necessarily meant to get goals now, the central strikers. Like, you're looking at your wide players to do that. And Mainu cutting in and curling is much more reliable than Rashford to me um, because he's not relying on pace and directness. He's manipulating the ball. And what's, what's so important and so good about what Kobe Mainu did is that not only does he manipulate the ball, he manipulates the man. And that's not yes. something that I see from Anthony and Rashford, mm. is that he's moving players out of position with his touches. Like, they all have an intent. And then he applies the right power and kind of texture to, to the ball to, to curl it in the top corner. And it's like, it's an elite talent. Goal scoring will always make you an elite player. But combine that with his ability to take the ball and so on i i really think that we should be looking at how we can get him playing as a left side interior like because he's got he's it's very rare to find an 18 year old that can do this from midfield yeah. like very rare big up oba he's asking kobe or alexis McAllister. i think they're two different players but both talented i thought McAllister was impressive today for sure yeah. but can we Talk about the goal. Dora, I asked Bath time to talk about the goal. He didn't even talk about the goal. He didn't touch I did. It. But Dora, can you just go into detail? Because this was special. Well, it was uh we all know that Kobe is absolutely amazing with his uh, you know, he's a great technical player. And the way I see it, like it all started with Casemiro's wild pass. Uh <laughs> came to so I'm reacting a lot right now. So uh, Kobe actually led the half counter attack as well. He's going through the middle. He passes it to Garnacho. A bit of a hospital pass, but Garnacho gets it. He passes it. Garnacho goes to the middle, but he brings back the ball uh, to, uh, to Van Bissaka on the wing. Van Bissaka sees Mainu on, I would say, 14 meters away from goal, a bit on the left, and. He has three. He is like an, in a in a Liverpool triangle, right? He has three Liverpool uh, players uh, around him, and he has the time to guard the ball, turn around, put it on his right. And it's not even, you know, when you are trying to shoot the ball, it's not. He it wasn't, you know, in front, in front of him. But my God, it was a bit. It was like this. His back was he, half of his body was, be, uh, you know. He didn't even face the goal properly. And he turns around and he scores an absolutely amazing curler. It was, I mean, it really, like, it went like this. It went like yeah. this. It's it's absolutely amazing. Uh, I don't know. Like, I was in shock. I was, you know, I was a guest in the house. And, you know, <laughs> my mom uh, uh, asked me to to drive her to her old friend. And the lady had a broadcaster where Manchester United and Liverpool, they had a program uh, where I could watch the game and I was, and I interrupted her and I was like, oh my God, we scored, we scored, what an amazing goal, what an amazing goal. So I was a bit, you know, like a 12 year old kid when he scored that goal. But I mean, for a good reason, we have a diamond in our team and I hope that his, uh, his development won't be stopped if you mm. get what i mean right that it won't be stopped by the bad managers by the bad systems by bad by bad uh workings of the football club and i hope that he grows and grows and grows and stays uh, at manchester united and stays part of manchester united and be that player that will lead us to the success that we all hope for uh i'm so impressed with him uh i i enjoy watching him play i thought that I will be a bit more balanced as well. I thought until that moment, it felt like Klopp targeted him, especially this game, because yeah. he was uh, doing rounds uh, against Liverpool uh, in that cup game. He was marvellous. Yeah. This time, he was a bit poorer on the ball. They really hounded him, McAllister, Sobosly, and 
and and well, later it was uh, I don't know who was later, but it was another Liverpool player, uh, okay. Curtis Jones, and but still even with you know not very good game he comes out and with this oh, body and he was good I, defensively Dora certainly in the second half like he made a oh lot yeah of second half was my yeah, yeah yeah I agree it was miles better I, I'm just saying that, that he recovered now? are you are you, I, are you able to see I, the I goal it. now I tell right because you can see it the genius of that goal right is when you see him and he takes the ball mm -hmm. not only can his marker not take the ball off him unless he tries an Anthony versus Kukurea tackle. The yeah. goalkeeper can't see the ball, and that's what that's why he, he's two steps, he's two steps behind. It is yeah. if Kobe means that, and I think he does, in order I, that he's aware yeah. of like no one can see the ball except for him and no one can challenge. Do, do you see how much that elevates the quality of that goal? Yeah, yeah. like yes. that's why I'm thinking. That's why I thought, seeing that goal today, that that is an elite goal-scoring move, if he's done that. Um, yeah. Like, really elite. Yeah. Like, um, the protection of the ball and the understanding of, you know, what's going on around him and that people yeah. can't see it. And the other thing that I really liked about it is that he's hit that. Uh, but Hoyland, if he's a bit sharper, can get on the end of it as well. It's a, it's a wonderful... It's just it's just such good play. Um yeah. But are you happy with that as a description of Monday now? Yeah, brilliant. Thank you very much. Uh, finally got round to it, bath time. It ended on a positive. Now, look at the picture. He's doing that salute. And to whoever, someone in the crowd, obviously, he's buzzing. But I just what I love about him is his uh, poise, his composure on the ball. But even the reaction, he didn't go off. He didn't sort of lose it, which I would. If I score a goal like that, I'd be, you know, all over the place, gassing myself out, running up and down the yeah. pitch. He's just so composed, so poised. And, you know, the teammates, are just they love him. You must love playing with a player like that who's going to keep the ball, you know, and be a good level-headed player you know, at his young age on, on the pitch. What a great season for him. Here's one um, of you, Armando. Yeah. Would Kobe Minor have scored that goal if Rashford had been playing left wing? Yeah, quite possibly. You think the ball gets to him? Oh, right. I was Rashford the ball doesn't come him. inside. No, no. We have, yeah, I see what you're saying there because Ganacho popped it off. Yeah, to Wan -Bissaka. I think that there's a lot of times when you see a weaker player, especially Wan -Bissaka down on the left hand side, you don't really pop it to him because you think oh, he's, he's not going to do anything with it. And uh, so, Ganacho, fair play to him because that's something in his game which I think he's developed is he's giving the ball up, he's popping it, giving it to teammates because you can't gas a guy, a defender out every single time, yeah. you can't do anything on every time. So, I think that's a wise decision and good play from um. Ganacho to pop it off and fair play to um Wamasaka to get up and down like that and play the pass into feet. But like you said, the first touch that Kobe took, Jones went that way. Yeah, because it's, he I, wonder, I can't stress how brilliant that touch is. Yeah. Like I need to see him in that position and do that again because yeah. I mean you are uh, like you're you're talking world like you're talking world class levels yes. and that is in my view that that you know that's the eleven best players in the world to be world class mm -hmm. but that that touch and the shielding of the ball is genuinely only top players can do that like really top players yeah. so I'm I'm so intrigued about what our next manager is going to do with him yeah so we just touched <laughs> on uh, Wan Bissaka being involved maybe he gets an assist for that but wow he does. Uh, 2-1, we're up, and wan -Bissaka. Let's just talk about this, because we, whether it's a penalty or not, I mean, at this stage in the game, it happened against Chelsea. Why are we going to ground in the box? Why can't we just stand up? As you said earlier, Dora, I'm taking the words right out of your mouth, going to repeat exactly what you said, but what's going on with the mentality? Is it, you're tired at that stage? You're desperate? You think you lost your man, uh, like Dello against Chelsea? Why did he need to do that? I don't know. Uh, I think Van Bissaka is one of those players who still has some bad habits, I would say, and that is like he is an an elite, an elite tackler, right? He's always, you know, he has a good timing most of the time. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he really. But I think that he doesn't have that much much pace as a fullback. Uh, I always felt that you know he has, you know, he's he has long legs and you know, but you know. We have another uh, player who has long legs and he's quite fast. 
but Sam will, you know, agree with me. That's probably McTominay. But I don't feel like Van Bissaka is a very fast player. And I think that most of the, I would say, especially against the bigger teams, I think that, um, you know, uh, wingers of the Premier League are usually much faster than Van Bissaka. Hence why he is always relying on his tackles. That's why I always uh, struggle with Casemiro in that midfield because he's always, you know, you know, he's getting overrun and he needs to rely on his tackles. Once again, today, even today, he got a yellow card in 97th minute and we could have, yeah. if he had, uh, you know, not a proper midfielder because I think that's too harsh, but a midfielder who, you know, is a bit fresher at that point in game, but also, you know, fast enough to, you know, stop the, the opposing player. He just dispossesses him and that's all, but he committed a foul and it was a really hard attack and he got a yellow card. I'm actually watching this penalty and it was a dive at first, guys. I think we need to rewatch it again. Uh, I'm actually watching it real time. It was a dive. Like it's a stonewall penalty, Dora. Like um, he, make, he makes contact with him. He slides. Him make, did he make he contact? Take the ball. Yeah. Not at make, first. He makes contact. Not at first. No, he doesn't. Do you he want hits, me to send you a video? Hits, no, he hits the back of the guys of the guys' um, uh, right thigh as he follows through. Like. Uh, Elliot dangles it out, but I mean that that is honestly that's a I think penalty. I think that it's it is a penalty. Goal. Sorry, sorry, I, I'm not finished. At first, it doesn't feel like a pen. However, when he goes down, he's uh, Ooh, how do you say? It? Sorry, hang he's on a second. Like, yeah, he's yeah, trying continue. to find it. He, his leg, he's. Uh, which one? Just a second. His right leg gets uh, in between Van Bissaka's legs and he falls down. And that's a, and Anthony Taylor calls up him. So, so no, it's a bit soft, in my no, opinion. Okay, so the penalty has been given. Yeah. What's the purpose of having VAR there? If, like what we're saying here, the dive began before there was contact. Contact. So the Liverpool player, Elliot, is what it's just, just suggesting here, has mugged off the referee, and mugged off VAR as well, by uh, the art or the dark arts of the game by fooling everyone to think there was contact when it wasn't and diving because he realised that someone was going to come and get the ball. He had no intention, it seems, if that's what they're saying. I need to rewatch it. You're watching it in live. He had I'm watching it live, but it's it's from the angle, right? I, I, like, I'm trying to... Like, this is from Sky Sports. You, you got, This is from Sky Sports. The angle is from the... Uh, it's literally from, uh, from you know, you, you're looking at it. Like, you're looking... Uh, face on Van Bissaka and uh, Harvey Elliott, right? Yeah. And I get what that time is saying with the a little, but you need a freaking microscope to see that uh, mm. to touch. And I know because it is in the momentum and all that. It's just look at the end of the day. I'm not saying that we lost because of the refs. Uh, not lost. Uh, it was a tie because of the refs. But like we are, and I agree that Van Bissaka needs Ugh. to do better here and all that. But like you know it's it's very soft it's very soft and you know what i always want to be balanced and all that but you know maybe maybe i should stop looking at it because <laughs> i'm I, I will probably make something up but it really looks soft at first I'd, like I, I, I just do, don't know i want to know what the, the var conversation was with this because yeah there's going to be uproar about it. it seems there is right now going on everyone's talking about it, it. probably is yeah. especially I'm very amongst surprised. Yeah. I'm very surprised there's uproar about it. Sorry, there was an Amazon delivery man shouting in the middle of my street. Um, mm -hmm. I, I thought we were under attack. I was getting ready. <laughs> um, like, I, I am, I'm pretty stunned that people don't think that that is, that is a penalty. It is uh, as clear as daylight to me. You can't slide in the box and then touch, and then touch a guy. Even, even if there's minimal compact, uh, contact, it still it still impedes the player illegally. Um, I'm, I I just I think people should really focus on the utter idiocy of what Adam Wambasaka did. It's the same as what Delo did, like and what Anthony did. And th th these mistakes, I don't know where they're coming from because in none of these situations should you be making those challenges. A Monday, should you? When you think yeah, about the uh, I suggested at uh, bath time late in the game, you're tired. Um, maybe you're making stupid decisions based on being tired and um, exhausted, and that's probably why I went to ground. I, I think I don't think it's it happening twice in a week late yeah. in the game. I, but I'm, the I'm point I'm making, 
I don't think it's tiredness. I think it's fear. I, I, mm. I, I think it's 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 fear, and it might be because our two right backs have conceded two penalties at left back yes. in a week. So as much as the position is the same, as you know, you have a strong foot for passing a football, and you have a strong foot for tackling a football, right? Like I'm on yeah. do you're right footed, I would suspect. I am indeed, yeah. Do you prefer making a tackle with your left foot or your right foot? With my right foot. Yeah. And so the, so this might this might come into it. Like, yeah, Bidji is saying something similar as well. Mm. You're playing a right foot at left back. And a couple of years ago, um, there was a trend in Spain to start playing in like playing right footers on the left and left footers on the right to deal with players cutting inside. From the wings, so like mm -hmm. you'd be tackling on your stronger foot. But personally, for me, I th I I believe that the team are scared of just how rubbish the setup is, and that fear fear is the mind killer. It makes you stop making good decisions, and it makes you make poor decisions because you're reacting off your emotions and physical responses rather than thinking about it. And Aaron Wambasaka. I, I mean, the guy is a dozy so-and-so. He was dozy on the corner. He was dozy there. But he's, he's dived in. And I, and I really hope that there's repercussions for him from his teammates. I'm not saying boot him out of the club or don't play him ever again or anything like that. But I feel I mean, he's yeah. let people down by doing that. And Harvey Elliott absolutely killed us when he came on. He's a great mm. player, Harvey Elliott. Like... And we needed a better response than let's go and put the pony next to Casemiro, who should have come off. At, like uh, Cas Casemiro needed to come. I mean, Dora was talking about the build up to the goal. Casemiro miscontrols the ball and then just tries a very unaesthetic overhead kick, um, like without knowing what's behind him. But players were running past him all match. Like, yeah. I think he was a red card at the end. The Monday seemed to think it was good that he gave away a free kick in a very dangerous area. But I think that, like, put Mount, put Mount, get Mount and Amrabat on. Get Ericsson on. Get someone yeah. on. But I think I think lots of things led up to the idiocy of that Wan-Bissaka uh, Wan tackle. And, it, and it, exactly the same against Chelsea or Brentford or whoever it was where we did all of it. I'm not I'm not a fan. And I'm also not a fan of wan -Bissaka in general. So I'm probably being quite yeah. biased. Okay, let's move on. We're going to wind it up very soon. Sorry, Dora, do you want to say something? I agree. I don't like Wan-Bissaka as well. I think that he never progressed from that first season at, okay. at the club. So, Realist Cav and George Kyle. Look here, this is Kambala. <laughs> it's a gem. Kambala had a very good game today. Let's look at the data. Um, I'm, this picture, what does this represent to you guys? Because I've seen this a couple of times the last couple of games. He's doing that to the crowd. What does that represent for you? Is that character? Do you like to see that? Makes a good tackle, recovery challenge against um, Nunes uh, and today. Whoa. And scary. Uh, scary, that recovery challenge, wasn't it? Yeah. On day? It looked like a blatant penalty from the moment was it he lost fear? it. You were saying about fear going to ground. I think that was fear he gave the ball away initially yeah. to make amends. I mean, like, look, I'll tell like, I actually don't really like players beating the shirt and doing stuff like that when they're defenders. Because when, when I was playing, right, I'll tell you why, Dora, when I was playing, the way you tested a new player in a football club, especially a defender, was you would put every decision against them in yeah. training uh, and to see how they react. And so I've all, like, so I really, I'm stunned at how Kobe Mainu just, Gets man of the match for his country on his debut. Scores a wonder goal against Liverpool. I and mean, there just doesn't, you know, it's all so easy to him. He's so cool. But when Kambala is like running around like the low, sort of smacking his chest and hyping everyone up, I just have this bias that defenders should be much, much calmer. So I've never, I've never really liked it. But the lad's gone out and he's done brilliantly today. He was not great in the first half, but he just grew into the game the more it went on. And I'm just really pleased that it looks like we've got another good prospect coming through who's who's fast. And he also defended very well in a wide area at one point. That's something yeah. we've uh, had problem with this season. I want to say hi to Darren Tubbs, a Liverpool fan, and runs a, a good channel called Keep It Moving on Facebook. Uh, he's saying FFS, which is for F's sake, Yabba. 
Uh, because obviously he wanted to, uh, a win. We've dented your title chances. But big up to Darren. Um, enough respect to you. So, Dora, I mean, look at this. 100% jewels, ground jewels won. 100% tackles won. 29 passes completed. Three clearances, two interceptions. Wham, what did I say? Wambasaka. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know his name. <laughs> what do you think yeah. of this young man stepping into that? Yeah, I think it was a good learning curve for him because he's a young player. Of course, he's going to bang on his on his chest. He's a young player who just started against Liverpool, and you know what? I don't, like I would do that as well if I was in his place. I would be so hyped. <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah, uh, I think I'm not saying that he's. Oh my God, he's absolutely insane. But at this moment in time, uh, you know, he's a prospect, and I think we should nurture that. Uh, uh, knowing that there is a possibility of Martinez getting injured once again next season, which is which I don't want to jinx, but there is a huge possibility because he's is you know he's not available most of the season. But I'm possibly going, and you know maybe buying one or two centre backs. I would love uh, to see, or and Johnny Evans possibly leaving uh, as well because well he's too old and he has one year contract. Uh, I would love to see Kambala, uh, you know, coming from the bench and you know be with the likes of Kobe and, you know, the likes of Garnacho uh, and even Amadialo if he stays next season to see how he, uh, you know, uh, develops. Uh, I think that I'm not saying that he's all of I'm not saying that he's going to save us or everything, but he has a pace uh, when he, when he, if he learns how to pass consistently and, you know, do the more technical stuff and even tactical stuff, I think he will be a really good servant to the club. So, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm glad that we have at least one good, uh, you know, or healthy centre-back. I felt that he and Maguire worked very well today uh, together. Uh, Maguire, uh, in my opinion, had a good game. Uh, I think he was dead on his feet uh, in the last 10 minutes, and I think most of the players were. But I think he... I think he did well today. I, I don't have I, I if he did a mistake uh today, he had some few, you know, a bit blundered clearances and all that, but I cannot remember a fatal mistake or something huge from him. I think he was routinely good today, which is you know, which kind of which kind of is you know his thing this season, even though he had some, you know bad performances as well but most of the cases when he started uh for us i think he played okay so yeah kudos to him as well so you talked about Maguire there um 16 well, hang, on, hang on a monday i want i want to hear what you think about kwambala and bagging the shirt and things i think that shows a lot of character so go back to him i mean we've seen a couple of games now he's gone to the crowd he, look at it this way right you gotta have something about you to make it as a pro to get as far as he's mm. got you gotta have something about you now, he's not known. You've seen people like Tunzebi come and go, being too quiet, not showing enough. By doing that to the crowd, you're going to win the crowd over. He's done that two games running now. And look at these stats here. Look at the data. They've got a good performance against Liverpool. He must have been blowing out of his backside after the game for all the work he put in. But he put in a good performance and he's like going to the crowd. When he lost the ball and Nunes got through and he got back and he made a tackle, damn right you should go to the crowd. Look at me. Thank God, yeah. you know, thing. that shows to me character. And that will show, you put a bit of pressure on the manager to say, look, this guy's got hunger. It's not, when you scout players, you're not just scouting them for their ability. They might be like, you compare the guy Q, that um, Dora from Liverpool, Kwanzaa, compare them. I was looking at the two and said, oh, they've got Kwanzaa. We've got um, Juan Bala, wasn't it? Kambala. Kambala. Look at the two. These are two young guys coming through. Cons has done really well. He's performed really well. Being calm, like you like them to be at uh, bath time. You mm -hmm. don't see that from him. But in the other sense, we're in a position where we're struggling. He needs to make a name for himself. And I think by doing that, I'm really delighted. By, I, I, if I was his friend, I'd be calling him and saying, bruv, that was the right thing to do. Um, you've got to do that bare times, isn't that right, Dora? You know? Um, <laughs> Who would you call him and say you've got to stop doing that? If you were friends with a player on the team, who are you ringing up today and telling off? Uh, <laughs> let's get on to that. Let's get on to that. Because uh, I think I think Wamsak obviously would be getting a few phone calls from friends and get really bants about him making the penalty and you know throwing it all away. We can't hold him to a lead. You know how it goes. But I think Wamb um, the two centre-backs done really well because, Dora, of the issues we had with defence and injuries, these guys stepped up and you can't sort of 
you know, dash that away and say, ah, oh, it means nothing. Two guys, Maguire's been under pressure, not assured of anything at Manchester United, and a young guy, Kambala, coming into the side as a centre-back pairing. They've done pretty well because you've got a set-piece goal from a penalty and a corner, you know, thing when they scored. But through open play, of all the chances that were created today, 28 shots on target. You've got to give credit to the... Which is shocking, by the way. You've got to give yeah. credit to the centre-back pairing of Harry Maguire, you know, blocks and interceptions, headers, tackles, and leading this young man, even though he wasn't leading um, our boy Kobe at set pieces, he was leading this young man through the game. And did you see um, towards the end of the game when Kambala made that old school tackle and got booked for it, that the manager was saying to him, no, nah, no, nah, stay central, don't uh, leave your position, um, which is great. So I I'm delighted by the two, the pairing of centre-backs. For me, those two should get special credit today for their performance. Do you agree? Yeah, I think they should. I think they should. That's why I was saying that they had a good game. Like, if you look at the way, if you look at two goal score today, uh, I think first set piece, uh, Blunder, Mainu or Casemiro are not uh, doing a proper defending their limiter player there. Luis Diaz is all alone. He scores a goal, right, from the corner. The other goal is Van Bissaka's mistake. So... I don't think, like, if you look at, like, okay, so, you know, we are saying that Kambala made that, you know, dodge tackle. At the, at the end of the day, it wasn't a pen, but, you know, he did it. He came back. Uh, I thought that Maguire had a good game as well. Uh, you know, ha for once, he was good in the air, especially defensively. Uh, Maguire. Uh, Maguire. Maguire. I mean, he is, this is. Come on. Uh, not all right. That's unfair. Uh, Maybe well, because I could, I, throw, I could throw a goat, like a cow, <laughs> like a whale, and Harry Maguire's going to head it away. Uh, not in the attack, not in the attack. That's why I said it. But, you know, because he always has a tendency to, you know, later on, the, but it is, that's a centre back play. So I like this, this, this season especially, I think all of, you know, all of his game got better. I know if it's because of pressure or because he wants to, you know, prove to everyone that he has a place in this team, but he plays much better than the last season. And that's why I said, you know, at least he's winning because before he couldn't even win a header, even though he was big. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I think that, you know, they all, I always felt that throughout the whole season, the defense, even though I had some issues with some of the players in the defense, uh, especially with the goalkeeper <laughs> like Onana, who had uh, you know T-Rex uh, hands in the last few weeks, he was he's kind of okay. Ooh, but... Did you see the Vaseline, Dora? No. Right. What? Onana was putting Vaseline on his gloves, and me and Mum they thought it was a bit weird. I just wanted to know if if maybe our Croatian co correspondent could give us an insight I, into that. I don't know why are people put... look. I know that uh, that. In handball, the handball players are putting glue on their hands. So when they catch the ball, it is easier for them to catch the ball. But I think it would be illegal in football. <laughs> Imagine Anana <laughs> jumping for, for, the, for the ball and the ball is, uh, you know, glued to his hand. I think it would be illegal. But, yeah, I don't know. I don't know why is he doing it. Maybe, the only maybe glue he... at the club is the stuff that Ten Hag sniffing. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe. Who knows? I never. I, why is he putting Vaseline? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. I. I mean, that's why he he barely catches anything. Maybe he should stop doing it. I know that uh, that goalkeepers like the gap spits in his spit always spit in his gloves. I don't know what what does that mean, but okay. Uh, I mean, someone should ask him. But yeah, I, I mean, twenty eight attempts. You know, every single game in average on average, I would say. It's really hard to defend against that, and I think that the defenders did a really good job today. When it comes Laura, to uh, we've got uh, Andrew Williams got all the ratings here. Anyone mm -hmm. you disagree with? Anyone? Just pick out a player that you want to discuss and say uh, for positivity um, rather than negative. Uh, uh -huh. You want me to find uh, a player that he rated low, and I would say something positive about him. Okay. Oh, no, well, you just pick a player, uh, anyone, any player <laughs> that you, you feel that you want to discuss. Uh, I would give Maguire a six as well. I would give him okay. Maguire a six as well. Uh, I would uh, I would give Rashford a four. I felt like he had some moments, but he was useless once again. I think Hoylund is a proper uh, rating. I, I thought that even though he had some, you know, good movements and all that, I, once again he is, was a bit invisible. 
Casemiro is too high for me. I think he had moments when he was okay, but once again, he's just too slow. He's misplacing passes and his clearances aren't that good anymore. And I'm just, uh, Bruno was poor, poor as well this game. And I agree with that time when he got deeper, he actually started playing better. I don't know why, but it's kind of his thing in the last few weeks as well. But yeah, I think most of these ratings are okay. There's, a, there's a score of four there for Holland. Uh, bath time, I mean, is that fair? Um, I think like if you look at the ratings like in general, um, I think that the only one I have a slight issue with is Ganacho, who had dropped to a six. But I think it I think it reflects what I saw from the match as well. Like I think he's been kind to Casemiro and a little bit mean on Bruno, but mm. not not wildly. Um I think that um Hoyland like he had a purple spell and he scored a lot of goals, but we've always been worried about his hold up play, which isn't isn't anywhere near the required level. Yeah. And you know don't forget Keane also said the same thing about Haaland saying that he was a League Two player in terms of his hold up play. Um but what another deficit we saw a bit from Rasmus today was his inability to play the final ball, um, which annoyed me quite a lot. And if we are doing a, um, if we are playing whatever that style is, like kamikaze, I, I don't know, like give me some adjectives, jealous kamikaze style of football, um, you need every single one of your players to be able to play the final ball. And Rasmus can't do it. So I understand why he's got like one of the lowest scores, but I would give Casemiro the lowest because um he's just he's too fat to be on the football pitch at the moment. Like there was one bit where Salah just ran, he didn't beat him, he just ran past him. And like it's getting it's getting embarrassing now, like just how one paced Casemiro is. It's an awful I mean, a great player's career. What's we drop him and who do we play there at the time? Bruno. Bruno, Bruno, Kobe, McTominay would be mm. the midfield I'd pick with Bruno playing deeper because I I just think he's more effective as a defensive player now than as an attacking yeah. player. Yeah. And uh, just and just uh, drop uh, Amrabat off the cliff because he's just oh my god. Oh my god. Did you see where he um he jumped over the he jumped over a tackle like a horsey jumping over a game? <laughs> okay. But also like for, for the for um you reminded me Amonde, I thought Kambala was actually close to a red card as well. But um when Casemiro got that uh did that horror challenge at the end um and took the man out. All of that came because um, Amrabat was pissing about at like right wing and just it was just bloody useless. And I mean, I I don't know, I don't know why we've got Amrabat in. I always we got George up here. I always remember when we signed Amrabat, George telling me about how he had a better game than Rice or something. And you fast forward six or seven <laughs> months, and everyone was so excited about Amrabat. I'm not calling George out because you know, you know he based it off one game, but. Everyone like used to go on about how great Amrabat is, and uh, him and Casemiro like it really shows that you need physicality to play in the Premier League. You need to be able to run. You need to be able to use your body correctly. None of them can. So Bruno, Kobe, and McTominay are players that can use their body correctly and can run. So I think they give us the best chance of winning football matches. Although it could also be an absolute disaster when all three of them like <laughs> just run up the pitch. Fair enough, yeah. guys. Uh, George Carl's got a comment. I'm just I was looking for the quote right now because I've seen it. Um, Eric Ten Hag said something about his past style of play, but I think he's been getting pelters about it. And there yeah. was a comment saying about we look to dominate. It didn't make sense. I, I have to read it again, but um, we try and get it maybe for tomorrow's show. I want to say hi to Kieran. He's saying Ten Hag is a joke. He takes Ganacho off with Amrabat. Just why? I think maybe after. We conceding goals. You want to secure the game, possibly. Uh, Big G saying, "Hey, Kathy on reception has been cooking <laughs> uh, doing Lancashire hot pots a uh, long time." Big just up. Go, to just go back to Kieran's comment, Amondo. Do you think that? Do you think that this is this is silly or not? We've been in winning positions twice in the last two games when Ganacho has been taken off, and we and then we've drawn and lost those mm. two games. Is is there anything to that? I think you understand. I, I didn't have an issue with it. At this stage of the game, thinking, all right, let's bring another man into midfield. Bruno went to the left. 
But the problem with that is you don't have the pace. And usually as a defender, when Ganacho is there, you don't really want to push forward too much or leave yourself exposed because of the pace that you've got. Yeah. Rudy's not really going to give you that. So, And there's no one else. Rashford was off the pitch as well. And Anthony's not, you know, you can catch Anthony. In Johnson, both games. Imagine. In yeah. both games, Rashford and Ganacho were off. Uh, yeah. Like... So that needs to be considered based on that. But I understand the, the theory behind it. Bringing on Amrabat, he can, you know, supposedly play better than Rice and keep the ball like he did at Royal <laughs> for a long time. So you, you understand that, put get numbers there and um, be more secure and keep people in that position, protecting the middle of the pitch. I imagine. So yeah, but it just didn't work out today, did it? And it's, that's not down to Amrabat. I'm not here to um, disrespect the guy, even though this is the channel he probably hates the most after bath time called him a Shetland pony. Um, yeah, guys, we've gone on really a lot now um, about this game, but it's Liverpool, so it, it doesn't matter, does it really? We'll be back tomorrow, don't we, for the eye test. Dora, um, you've rushed home. Um, thanks for jumping on, no doubt about it. You'll be back next week for the preview or the post-match or something. We, we'll be sure to see you because George loves you. I think Andrew loves you. And Andrew actually said in the comments that said something like, um, you got more knowledge of football knowledge in your left butt cheek than both of me and bath time as well. So, yeah. <laughs> so there you go. Well, that's oddly specific, specific <laughs> but thank you, Andrew. Uh, yeah. And you know what? I would take it. I would, even though I doubt it. Don't say that to it. Andrew. Don't say you'll take it to Andrew, please. <laughs> oh, no. But, you know, it's a bit specific, but, you know, thank you for compliments. I, I, I doubt it. These guys are proper they are you know proper football brains and i'm just here to you know get my you know foreign creation perspective as someone who you know lived lived lives football in the last 20 28 years so yeah vroom vroom i mean i didn't get a spinning ticket don't worry i was good i was good i was you good. drove like casemiro <laughs> Nice oh my god! Yeah. Oh my god! Someone was like just like Casemiro today on the road. Like Jesus Christ! If he says <laughs> seventy kilometers per hour is a limit, don't drive fifty kilometers. Like I'm just here. I I can't. I can't. I can't. Like I, I faced a lot of Casemiros when I you know when I started going home. So. <laughs> oh boy! So, so yeah. guys, um, it's not really a celebration tonight. Uh, I suppose it's just. Some, yeah, so we would just be smiling and saying, right, we ended the week. Pew, yeah. let's get away with this. What's on next week? Is it, is it Coventry would be FA Cup next? For Man United? I'm not sure, but. And that's the only thing we've got to look forward to, isn't yeah, it? The season's, the season's kind of over. Like, yeah. hopefully, we can get past Coventry City, my mm. old nemesis. Um, <laughs> and then, God knows, but that, that really feels like the end of the Premier League season today for me. No. Well, well done. We put a dead in Liverpool's title campaign and um, we'll be back next week or back tomorrow, most certainly, with the eye test. It's been a long time coming. Um, but I know we'll be back tomorrow with that with bath time and myself and maybe even um, the football philosopher from Ireland. Yes, okay. I've asked him. Yeah, okay, Stefan will, will yeah. probably be on tomorrow. Okay, all right. Well, Dora, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you, everyone in the comments. Thank you, Bath Time again. We've we've finished the show, finished a tough week with a decent result, and we'll be back tomorrow. God bless everyone. Take care and have a lovely Sunday evening. Good night. <laughs>